Welcome, everybody, to the uh, Extended Play Movie Podcast, a podcast for true cinephiles. I'm your host, Stephen Vargas, and with me, as usual, is my... Uh, he's doing something weird with the microphone. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to extend it so that way you guys can hear me. Or maybe you don't want to hear me. I'll just put this mic back. And... Uh, my good movie buddy, Patrick Chen. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh as you've heard before, we've talked about how we uh, do one show. Uh, we try to do one uh, recording session for a couple of a couple of them, so we can get a back catalog. So we just came back from our lunch break, <laughs> uh, and uh, recording episode number three of <laughs> three for the day. But for you guys, it's episode forty-one. <laughs> yes, we've been doing these straight. Forty-one yeah, straight. Forty-one, 41 straight. Forty-one straight. I, I haven't slept this yet. Still, yeah, <laughs> we, we can't wait to see what two thousand eighteen holds because we're doing them all back to back to back to back to back to back because uh, we're it's only August of two thousand seventeen right now. Um, oh, I haven't showered in days. <laughs> <laughs> My animals think he's part of the furniture around here. Uh, um, so our, our, our movie continuing on with 1977, <laughs> uh, our movie this week is the Kentucky fried movie. Yes. <laughs> well, most, probably a lot of you have no fucking clue <laughs> what this is about. Like, what the hell is the Kentucky fried movie? I know of Kentucky fried chicken, KFC, you know, but I don't know anything along the, along the, uh, the same, uh, yeah, exactly. It's right, kind of, right. Train of logic. Right. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're there. You're there. This movie but. posters does, does have a uh, pieces of chicken on it. Oh, have <laughs> you seen? So there, I guess there's a set of memes going on right now where they replace, uh, pictures of explosions with fried chicken. So if you, for example, like you see like, like this, the space shuttle launching, right? You would see like this, these plume of like, you know, smoke and flames underneath as the boosters go up. Right. But those plumes are now replaced with pictures of fried chicken. Wow. Yeah. So here, I'll bring We're recording this, this at the end of April. So by the time you guys hear this, me, this me, me may be over. It, this yeah, it probably would have been like, <laughs> what, you mean that thing? It came out like months ago? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right, uh, nice yes, in 2017 when we we're recording this. Yeah, nice to stay on top of it, guys. <laughs> um, so this is one of those first parody movies. <laughs> Um, and in, in, in retrospect, it's, it's done by the, just for you guys know, it's done by the guys that eventually went on to do airplane, the naked gun, yeah. uh, top secret, yeah. which might be a future one. Cause <laughs> I look at Val Kilmer in it and uh, Nazi ghost in the first night, but, but that those examples don't <laughs> necessarily work well for this one it's uh, my chicken on the bottom, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay. I see how it works. Cause I'm like going, it just looks, looks like smoke. Oh wait, no, it's, it's extra chicken. crispy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and, uh, this, is, this was basically done as a, a sketch comedy, uh, movie mm -hmm. and, uh, fried chicken. <laughs> he showed me a bunch of the fried chicken memes. <laughs> um, in one of the things I kind of wanted to talk about is in this day and age, you know, with the internet and how fast parodies of anything, you know, younglings or anything like that comes, <laughs> comes about. Younglings are a parody. Is yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you see something with lightsabers, it's always a young picture of Anakin and younglings. Um, how parody films don't seem to work anymore. They, yeah, because I mean, like, what was the last, like, we've had, like, Scary Movie, Not Another Team Movie, right? Yeah, and like, then you've had those, like, really low budget, you know, disaster movie and, you know, all of those generic. Kind but of I think, but here's the thing. I kind of think it's because the way the comedy is executed no longer works because we still have similar comedies of that type. It's rare, but like, um, like I still like, uh, uh, those of you who watch Angie Tribeca, I still think that's like the current successor of that type of humor. Hmm. Uh, cause, uh, yeah, the, the Angie, the Angie Tribeca shows, they, they use like naked gun and airplane as like, as like references. Right. So that time, that, that type of like, um, real surreal kind of, I don't know how, how else you would describe it, but like, uh, um, that type of humor right. does exist in these type of shows and it, it, it's executed very well in Andrew Tribeca. Like, I think that show's fucking hilarious. Um, but you go back to like other movies that also were inspired by it, like, like the scary movie series and another, another, not another teen movie series or, or whatever. Right. Right. And it just seems kind of, um, I don't know. They don't work for it. There are people out there who love them. Yeah. I, I think a lot of it is because 
see one of the things that I always thought was interesting with the like the airplane movies mm. or even the first Naked Gun movies mm. is it wasn't played for the laugh. It was played serious. Yeah. And it's, you well, know. That's how Andrew Tribeca is as well, yeah. right? Nobody, like, is doing it for the last. But the joke, the, and the, the jokes, there are some that are, you know, you know, just, okay, it's a setup for a joke. Mm. But I think with, like, some of the, like, the Not Another Team movie and stuff like that, there were some moments that were interesting, but there were just some that were just kind of weak, just kind of, okay, we're, you know, we're you know, just kind of making a joke about this. Like one of the, one of the things I thought was interesting about a, a, another teen movie, which actually was on, I think MTV the other day or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they had the data, the thing at the prom, I guess, where they kind of had a little bit of a dance off between Chris Evans. Oh and, yeah. And, uh, I, I keep forgetting that's Chris Evans. And yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah, Chris, uh, Captain America and, um, Supergirl sister. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but, um, and they're having that dance off and then, the guy that plays Ted Mosby mm-hmm. pops up from behind with um, to this girl and leans over and goes, who would have thought there's so many excellent dancers at the school? <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like, okay, you know. But I think what sometimes th- um, what happens too is that I think the, the comedy has kind of, the parody is not as strong as the, the meta mm. about, I think the, that sometimes we've moved into the, the meta comedy, like community, mm. where they would just kind of, kind of be aware of what they are and then you know some of those things and like op-ed in the in the show would be like oh hey you know it's like oh this is a bottle show you know it's all going to take place in here and you kind of lay it out for you so and then it follows the tropes of those you know of those and and then there are others that are parodies which aren't really parodies they're just attempts to make a movie similar to that which actually turns out to be just pretty horrible yeah and it's just like oh that was a parody oh it wasn't meant to be oh that's even worse mm. um <laughs> you know um like you know uh tokyo drift it's a parody of the of the rest of the, of the, <laughs> of the fast, fast and, and furious, furious movies which is funny because who would have thought like you would take the director of tokyo drift and he would be the one to sort of resurrect the franchise i know right? it's like <laughs> i know it's funny because it, well i always that's why i always thought it was interesting that he left when he did because it kind of came full circle <laughs> like once he came back to tokyo drift and killing han okay i'm done i'm god it's like yeah because he's done he, he, he just facts he made so many movies that he went around to the back to, to touch on his first one it's like yeah okay that's enough um but yeah you know uh um it, it, so like movies that we have like of these of the 70s you know and then eventually the 80s with like airplane and stuff like that <laughs> are like this is a parody movie but it, it's it's even more so than of a than a parody. It's, it's one of the one well, of the, one of the stories that I heard on this is that the guys to, for use as material would put in a VHS tape and record whatever was on the channel overnight. Yeah, and just spoof that, and, then, right. and just see what they came up with overnight, and then spoof it. That's why you get the feature presentation and mm-hmm. stuff like that, because that was late night TV back then, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so, it's it's really just kind of like. When you look at it, you're like, God, how high were these guys <laughs> like, when they made some of this stuff? I mean, but at the same time, like how like it's pretty groundbreaking, right? I mean, I have oh, to yeah. like I have to admit like this. So Kentucky Fried movie is one of the few movies from this era that, that we're doing for the series that I have seen before <laughs> and, and many times. <laughs> right? uh, and, and, I, and file I, this under the you will never be able to do this movie again. Yeah, you definitely cannot na- make a movie. You cannot make a movie with these type of jokes. <laughs> done in the same way <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah you could not do that today i you know things are a lot more sensitive today i think <laughs> for, for something like this to be made but uh but back then i now once again like i said before with the other films uh, we've done in this series i mean i'm 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 doing this with very limited context right with right with, with of the films of the time and and just how things were at the time right because i wasn't even born yet uh but like uh um how I'm pretty sure this is probably like one of like the comedy in this is very groundbreaking. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to have satire. Satire has always been around like forever. Right. right. But like, but just to have it just kind of flipped on its head and really like just in your face and just kind of raunchy as it is. <laughs> right. I don't think there really is anything before it like it. No, really? I, this was, this was one of those movies. Well, this is actually an independent movie. <laughs> Because 
every studio passed on it because mm-hmm. every every studio basically said uh, we're not doing a sketch comedy movie. <laughs> yeah, nobody would want to see a bunch of skits. Yeah, on film, <laughs> and uh, and it proved it wrong because after this, there came there came a uh, a few of them because this movie was made for like a couple hundred thousand dollars, and then they <laughs> ended up making so many millions of dollars, which is why they got into Airplane and and um, and uh, like Naked Gun, uh, Naked Top Gun, Secret. Top Secret. Uh, which top secret's so bad, but it's great. Yeah. I love that, especially seeing Val Kilmer saying, you know, um, uh, add that to your list of viewing Val Kilmer as a sing as a uh, Elvis inspired singer. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's it, it's it's interesting because yeah, you you didn't really have anything that was so in your face comedy. Um, I mean, a lot of this stuff that you see on this movie is. Um, it is vocal, it's visual, and a lot of times it's in the background. <laughs> you, you, it, it, but it's quick. It's, it's quick, quick, yeah. It's very quick. It's uh, and if you watch Airplane, it's the same type of humor. You know, <laughs> you know, you don't. It's not always what's going on in the foreground <laughs> that's really in it. In it, you know, it it always it always when you watch this movie, it's the same thing like when you watch a Naked Guns in the credits. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you always see. You know, they instead of putting the extras, they put the lines that these actors had, and then their names next to them. The favorite, the 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 skit I totally forgot about until I saw it again recently, uh, the Kentucky Fried Movie, was the skit where the uh, the two. It's a talk show, and it has like the the French oceanographer. Oh right, and then, and then the, the, the boom, boom mic, mic just, <laughs> <laughs> just slapping them in the face. I know it's like, which is funny because you you always get that in the shots, like in always the movies or TV shows, you always see the boom mic in there. But, but just the timing at all, because like in the very beginning, you see like okay, okay, something's gonna happen with the boom. But even though like you know it's about to happen, when you see it, just slap them in the face. <laughs> And then it's like going up the guy's face <laughs> right. as it's going, and then you get to the, in chest, the water, and, and then getting his heartbeat. Yeah, you get this heartbeat in the water. You just hear everyone. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just uh, it, it's hilarious. It's that kind of stuff where you're just kind of like, what the fuck? Like, and nobody reacts to it, which is great. This is what yeah. makes those movies work: is that nobody reacts to it, <laughs> like they're not aware of what. Like. Right. And it's funny too because you see that kind of humor in the Blues Brothers. Yeah, because well, it's John Landis. Mm-hmm. This was John Landis's first film, uh, and uh, this is basically what got him the directing job for Animal House, and, <laughs> and eventually Thriller. And Did the, you hear that story? Yeah, yeah and eventually Thriller. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and he uses that same type of humor, and which is what makes like the Blues Brothers so hilarious, is because Carrie Fisher's blowing up, trying to kill them, and they don't acknowledge any of that that's going on. <laughs> the, the the his whole apartment collapses. They get up. Oh, we're late for work. You know, it's like what the fuck is going on. You know, <laughs> nobody here talks about this. The, the other, the other uh, scene I love uh, at the end of Kentucky Fried Movie was uh, with uh, that movie trailer with George Lazenby. Oh yeah, and he's trying to have that conversation, and everything is going on around him. exactly all the explosions, and it's the, the same car lines. It's the same four <laughs> lines, the entire thing, and it all cycles around to that lot that those four <laughs> lines, and you have garbage flying at him you have explosions and uh, cardboard cutouts getting thrown out there and i started laughing because i'm like this fucking lord george Laz- lazenby doing this you know or what was the other one like like what isn't it the same trailer that's the one with donald sutherland where he falls yes, down with the cake yeah they call him the clumsy uh, waiter or something like that and that's all he does that's it's all just... he does yeah falls he gets up and falls over again actually i found on wikipedia they had um an actual breakdown of all the skits oh. so uh like the first one is it's the news the news announcer. You always hear like in the news in the uh, back of the day it was like, you know, uh, or you hear it now too. It's like something's happening. Why it's going on in Main Street. Yeah. Film at 11. Film at 11. And I love this is cuz he goes like uh the popcorn you're eating is has been pissed. <laughs> has been pissed in. More than more than 11. 11. <laughs> um you have the argon oil. Oh, from the teenagers faces. Yeah. Oh, that was so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, the combs! Remember the combs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're supposed to be like they're tr- there's our um, argon oil is supposed to be trying to get all renewable, this new, renewable, or, renewable like energy sources. Yeah, so something. they decide to to because uh, uh, this was also during the time of like like gas shortages. Yeah, right? the, yeah, the gas shortage. And so they and they had this kit where they tried to like uh, as a new source of crude oil, they decided to pump it from kids' faces, <laughs> yeah, teenagers' faces, their combs. <laughs> right, they, and they're showing like they're cutting they're cutting away to Italy, and they're saying that they had a revolutionary program right there where they just had <laughs> italians put their combs <laughs> and then like uh natural gas where they had people go to this to, diner to the barbecue they, in texas or whatever yeah and then they capture their them uh, <laughs> farting <laughs> all <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and then you know, then they had an AM t- AM morning show, which was random and uh, and uh, <laughs> you know that it was segments that like they were tr- oh they were talking about teacher strike. Yeah. And they kept trying to go back to this reporter and the reporter's just sitting there, not hearing that he's on the air and just kind of standing there. They're like, okay, we'll get back to him. And my favorite though was the astrologer. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, and these are for people who, you know, astrology is not an accurate science. It's just for people that refuse to take, uh, take, uh, <laughs> uh, what was it? Take um, responsibility for their own lives. <laughs> I loved how any reporter that had mentioned astrology afterwards though, was or they were shot Gemini. Within... No, they were Gemini that oh, they, could get, right. they could get killed randomly with an, um, <laughs> killed randomly or something right. like that. And everybody that mentioned they were a Gemini got killed by a bow and arrow because <laughs> that happens later in one of the trailers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was it the Lazen V one? I think it, it was. was the, it yeah, was where he's like V1. talking that he's like, well, we could. <laughs> 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 but what's f- funny is they have uh, the um, the animal segment where they bring out this uh, rare hamster. And she's like, oh, yeah. He's like, oh, I should get that. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And they go, so you have another one. Yeah. And she just tosses the <laughs> hamster over her shoulder. <laughs> and then you get the gorilla that comes out. <laughs> And it's Rick Baker, by the way. <laughs> in that suit. In that suit. The real Rick Baker, you know, the one that may probably made that suit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that was Rick Baker who played the gorilla. But what was funny is that they're talking about how the gorilla is unable to mate and all the reasons that it could possibly. And the gorilla is looking up like and he's getting, getting angry angered. with every suggestion. Yeah, it's like, he could even be impotent. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> like, it's like he totally understood and it starts, you know, beating the shit out of everybody. <laughs> Um, when he just starts like ripping off the dress and it starts knocking the guy over the gorilla right yeah, yeah. they and then the all hell breaks and then loose. it goes to the newscaster and the guy's like yeah and then we've got this uh the teacher and then the gorilla comes in through the falls back <laughs> um and then you got the the random the random new his new car oh, yeah. <laughs> which is like he has new cars with multiple alarms going off and Every action he does, like buckling his seatbelt, locking the door, turns off one of the alarms, and all the alarms are go off, and he still has one. And the guy looks around, and then he looks down, and then unzips his or zips up his fly, and then all <laughs> the alarms are off. Keep in mind that's David Zucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one, which they could not do anymore, couldn't do. Oh, they- <laughs> Catholic Catholic high school girls in trouble. No, they couldn't. <laughs> oh my God! It was. Um, Oh, it, it, it's funny because um, I had the name. I was gonna, actually I should. I was gonna do this in the beginning. Samuel L. Brockowitz. Samuel L. <laughs> L. Brockowitz, Brockowitz presents, <laughs> and it's just it's basic. If you've ever watched like teen comedies of the seventies, yeah, or even like the eighties too, early eighties, right? yeah, early, like Porky's, like meatballs. Meatball, no, not necessarily Meatballs, Wait, but like Porky's. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's, it's sex comedies. Yeah. You know, um, sorry, Revenge of the Nerds. That's what I was. Thinking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah se- uh, sex comedies, uh, teen sex comedies. This is what this was uh, based uh, about. And Jesus Christ, this is just women topless for no apparent reason whatsoever, <laughs> introducing each other to their friends topless. Right. Uh, the just the the shower scenes done for very <laughs> very hilarious shower scenes. Yeah, where he's like, it's just a uh, there's a shot of just a woman's breast and the guy rubbing it, and you're just hearing. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the one I don't remember is that is is that there there is a there is a shot of like uh, the the like this naked woman's bottom. And they slap the the pie. Oh it. right, yeah. The one I don't remember is when they do the same thing with a horse. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the horse it, they cut away from it, but it looks like after she hits the pie, it looks like it was about to buck. Buck, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. I noticed that too. I was like, going, oh, <laughs> that did. I know that didn't end well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then of course it's the shower door. Mm-hmm. You know the the girl the girl and guy having sex and he's from behind and her just her breasts are getting popped up against the glass and she looks like she's just not even interested like <laughs> just that face of just like huh, huh. <laughs> it was yeah it was like that was just like wow <laughs> um and uh so oh god the feel around oh the feel around theater that was. It, Mind it, you, that today's showing is done in feel around, <laughs> feel rama, right? Was that what they call uh, it? No, it was oh, feel, feel around. around. Yeah, <laughs> so feel around. I it was, I guess, at the time, kind of a a, a pair forty. I guess. Yeah, forty, and like because around the seventies, this and we mentioned this before is like movies didn't have a whole lot of people going to them. Yeah, so, so they had to get all gimmicky yeah, and cinemascope and mm-hmm. you know all of this stuff, and um, that's where you see that the in the beginning you saw three D was to get kids and everybody to go to movies 
So feel around was supposed to be this where you're watching a movie and everything that's happening on screen is happening to you. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because they're like, you know, you know, this isn't feel around. And the guy's like, um, yeah, because obviously he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> and the look of the people that work there are just kind of like, Ugh. like you kind of wonder, like, God, why are they being like so, so dicks? But then when you get in there, you're kind of like, oh, I see. Because it's kind of like, oh, he's just in it for the cheap thrill or whatever. <laughs> So, the, you know, the guy's there and the lady is talking to, I guess, her companion or something like that on the screen, which you don't see, but you hear. Yeah, you hear the conversation of what's going on in the film that they're watching off screen. Shadow Stevens, I think, is no, the like Shadow thing. Stevens doing the voice. Yeah. And um, who, he's all over this as the voice. I'm movie. Shadow Stevens. <laughs> yeah, that very, you can't miss his voice. No. Hollywood Squares. Remember? That? <laughs> <laughs> he also had that one movie. Uh, what was it? That that action comedy where he was like the the. Was it track? Something with a T. I got to look that up. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So, yeah. So, like, uh, you know, they're, you know, it's like, oh, to smell her perfume, the usher would spray, like, perfume in his face. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, she's like, oh, your hair. And she's like, you know, like, he, the, the usher, the, each, each uh, person has an usher behind them. And he's <laughs> supposed to mimic all of these things. And then eventually it's like, she goes, uh oh, what's this? It's like, is that lipstick on your collar? And then he's, he's starting to get manhandled. And then when she's like, he goes, put down the knife. And then all of a sudden the, the usher throws, puts a knife up to the guy's throat. And he <laughs> yeah. starts like, he starts like kind of freaking out. And then at the end, they're just like, uh, thank you for, what is it? Checking out our, our feature or whatever. But, yeah. uh, or stay tuned for our next full length feature, Deep Throat. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy jumps. And the, of course, the usher gives that look of like, oh, like, I missed my chance. <laughs> yeah, that movie with Shadow Stevens, it was tracks. He oh. plays like this hotshot detective. Think, think, uh, think Ford Fairlane. Oh, jeez. But like in the Oh, 80s. my God. That <laughs> forehead is. The forehead outmatches his hair. <laughs> it looks fake. His hair, his headline looks fake. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah. The uh, Nitex PM was that uh, sleeping commercial where it's like, yeah, we want to get a good night's sleep. And the lady's trying to wake oh, the guy yeah. up. <laughs> she's throwing, it's basically like just comatose. Yeah. She's trying to like wake him up with water and slapping him in the <laughs> face he's and he's just like uh. he's out. This is night takes me um high adventure oh high adventure that was the that was the skit high adventure with the boom, with the boom operator yeah uh the description basically is a uh, talk shows uh talk shows boom operator finds a french adventure guest boring and causes trouble with his boom mic uh <laughs> on both the guests and the host and it's it's hilarious too because like you know it gets close the you know, it hits the face, but nobody reacts. Nobody reacts. Nobody no, reacts. No. And like, in, in some cases, it's also kind of like just kind of like gently nudging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nudging the speakers, but they're not. They, they're, they're performing the whole entire show just totally with straight faces. Too. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, you have uh, another ho- um, news update. Moscow in flames and nuclear warheads headed to New York. Film at 11. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Headache Clinic, Bill Bixby, the Incredible Hulk himself, <laughs> is hosting a commercial, which is like, how did they get Bill Bixby? Right. Like, I know, like, I've seen uh, bloopers, like, uh, from the Incredible Hulk TV series, and he's funny. Like, you know, he just jokes and stuff like that. So I was kind of like, okay, I could see him doing that, but you're kind of like, wow, I got Bill Bixby. I got him to do it. Yeah, which is basically, it's a uh, clinic of sci- uh, scientists demonstrates their headache curing drug by pounding people in the head (laughs) and the commercial claims that people are not affected by the pain because they have one with a hammer like Mm -hmm. a mallet like hitting them and having them hit their head against the wall and Mm -hmm. stuff like that Mm. household odors oh yeah this was funny it's like it's like it is harold smoking cigars again and then there's another one like oh do you have fish dinner did a cow shit in here (laughs) 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 <laughs> uh oh in the wonderful world of sex oh god this one this one was great <laughs> this one was great you want to talk about, you want to describe it, it just well it starts off it starts off uh about these uh with with this romantic couple and and them slowly getting on and and, and shadow wait is it shadow yeah, yeah shadow, shadow stevens, stevens is doing the narration yeah. but it but it's supposed to be like this is uh, here's a guide to the wonderful world of sex, and it's supposed to explain the the details of intimacy and how to do how and to how to do it and how to do it, right? But when the when the guy is uh, failing miserably, 
the wall breaks down. <laughs> what, well, actually, when she goes, it's time to put on your diaphragm or birth oh, yeah, control device. The, she goes in the bathroom. And then you hear, and then he, you think it's about to end, then it goes, bah, 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 right, it, it just keeps going. <laughs> but, when, when, but when she finally emerges and they try to get it on and it's just not working out for him, he can't uh, rise to the occasion mm-hmm. or whatever. The wall breaks down. <laughs> Big Jim Slade. And Big Jim Slade. But, but the greatest part is the music that plays. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that fanfare that he gets when he when he emerges into the frame. Yeah. And he basically just carries the woman up and <laughs> off and off off the frame and, and and like to see Big Jim Slade like he's this hulking They call him a tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this hulking man and it's just it's just to, to, to see that shock of just like this person in the frame and watching him <laughs> just just carry the women off. But keep in mind, he does return later in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere, out of nowhere, for no for no apparent reason. And then, uh, of course, one of Patrick's favorite, yes, a fistful of yen, a fistful of yen. Which um, this is probably one of those skits that actually got became funnier for me. Like the more I saw it, now <laughs> that I know like what went behind it. Uh, for those of you uh, Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon fans, this basically is a spoof. <laughs> <laughs> Which occupies most of the movie. This this yeah, it's, festival it's yeah, like takes a half, half hour. Yeah, it's a and half then hour. the the, the movie is only like what eighty seven minutes. Something Seventy, like that? I think it's like le- uh, just under eighty minutes. Just under eighty minutes, and like thirty of that is occupied by this skit for a <laughs> festival yen, which is basically a spoof of Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. But the greatest thing is that the the they got two Koreans to play in the leads. <laughs> so already, and I and, and I kind of have a feeling that every part of what was wrong was deliberately wrong. Oh, because, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's not just... There's some people who can watch A Fistful of Yen and just saying, like, oh, they're just making fun of Asian stereotypes, right? But if you look at the way of how they make fun of it, it's super deliberate, right? Fistful of Yen, right? right. We already have, like, like the Japanese right there, and right. then they're making fun of a Hong Kong movie starring two Korean actors, right? <laughs> And then it's funny because they, um, I didn't know this until, until like a very, uh, uh, more recent viewing of it, but okay. So it's a scene when, when you see the Bruce Lee character and I think, I, for, I forget what they call him in this. Oh, they call him, uh, is it just Lee, uh, Lou, Lou, they call him Lou, 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 right? Yeah. So when he gets to the island and then you, you find, uh, um, the Bong So Hong uh, character, the guy, you magnificent gratitude, like that guy, right? So in the very beginning uh, of his uh, of his of his appearance mm-hmm. on the island he's speaking he's speaking korean right which is hilarious cuz like you know it's, it's modeled after like a hong kong movie where they're right. supposed to be speaking cantonese but so he's saying, he's speaking in korean but it's what he's saying in korean which i had no idea until i had a korean friend um uh translate for me mm-hmm. he's saying by the way korean fans uh, please don't be don't be like, don't be offended like, uh, don't be offended. They just want me to say things in Korean. And that's what he's saying. But he's <laughs> saying it, like, as if he's giving out orders. <laughs> I didn't know that until recently. That's awesome. <laughs> that's they awesome. just want me to say things in, in Korean. Korean. <laughs> Uh, and, and later, and later, when he's giving, when he's ordering his troops, this is like the big fight scene at the end when like all hell breaks loose, right? right? <laughs> he's 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 basically listing out names for his henchmen, like you know, you go after, you go after, you go after. But he's saying like chow mein, mushu pork, <laughs> jaja men. <laughs> he's all listing food names. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, I like the um, the alarm? The guy with the guy with the <laughs> the guy with the uh, the bullhorn. bullhorn. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got that little siren on his head. Or, or when they, uh, when the, uh, when they're trying to show uh, Lou that the room's being bugged. Oh yeah, and like, these really they get more and more obvious. Yeah, they start off with a little bug here, one sitting on there. <laughs> Suddenly, you have like the microphone <laughs> the, the, on the top, the in boom the recording room, the, oh, yeah, the, the boom, boom operator. Oh, <laughs> he's, in there. he's in the corner just looking at him like that. And then the then when he says at the end, he pulls that mic down from the ceiling <laughs> and goes. No, it would be against the law. And then puts the <laughs> mic back up. Or when they have that uh, that spoof of the dating game. Oh, yeah. Long way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, long way. Like bike rides. <laughs> long way. And then uh, enormous genitals. <laughs> 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 Which is basically, they're, they, they're letting you know, we know these are dick jokes. It's like we're going, and then finally it's like, we're just making it obvious at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, well, first I would do this, and then they get killed. The guy breaks their neck, and then the right. last one goes. But uh, what's his name, uh, Mister? Uh, you talking about the last uh, contestant, Dark 
uh, what was it? Oh, Perf- um, Dr. Klon. Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Klon would, is the minister of this, and he's like, brings all good, and they're like, yeah, they win, and then he said something, give him a hand. Yeah. And then he's like, I oh. give him a hand. <laughs> and then he's like, uh. <laughs> And then that um, that fight that um, Lou has with the the big guy in the in the middle where he keeps knocking him down, and then the big guy keeps getting back up, and he's just like, then he has that look of where he looks and mouths the word, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best is when he's having that fight scene at the end uh, with Bonzo Hong and the two uh, the two main guys. Oh right, right the the main villain and the hero. The, and then he misses a kick and kicks the sign. He's like, "Oh, oh shit!" shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hear him, I'm like, oh, that's so funny. Like, you go, oh shit. <laughs> and then when when he's fighting all those goons in the um, in the prison below, and he's just like, and all of them, all these guys come in, he takes us like, <sighs> kind of annoyed breath, like there's more coming at him. Um, oh, but what was it when he's introducing him to the prisoners? These guys don't know where they are, <laughs> and they care. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys don't know where they are and don't care. <laughs> But these guys are not drunk, but they do care. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, give him a drink. <laughs> yeah, but I'm but, I'm but not I drunk. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not drunk. Well, give him a drink and put him with the ones that don't care. <laughs> yeah. uh, then of course they they uh, Big Jim Slade shows up at the end to free all those prisoners. <laughs> with that fanfare. Yeah, with the breaks through the wall that comes in, it does the flex and then rips them out. So that song, that fanfare that I keep uh, talking about when when he makes his appearance, is supposed to be like a like a shalom like 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 a traditional uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Jewish song. Oh my god! Which which makes that even more hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because the the I was trying to figure out what Lou's in the the way Lou was talking. I thought it was because it was sla- It was kind of partly Elmer Fudd, right? Yeah, and that's what they're saying. It's like an <laughs> Elmer Fudd type of thing. And I was like, oh, that's what it was. Because for some reason, he kind of talks like this. Yeah. <laughs> what he says, he goes, I, what did he say when the. Something it, about focus. I'm trying to, he always had that line about focus. Yeah, but, um, oh, when he's like, when he was training those guys and he goes, you can do better. <laughs> and then the guy does it better. And then when the dog, when he's trying to sneak in and then the dog comes, it goes, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, just, and then he smacks the dog in the head. He goes, what was that? What was that? <laughs> you need to focus. You can do better. I, now do it again. And then the dog goes. Rah, 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 and he's like, the, and he, then that dog has that puzzled look. At <laughs> that kind of like, what the fuck just happened here? <laughs> but what's funny is um, when he's trying to sneak into that evil lair and he, that one guy is guarding and he's making all that noise. He knocks the shelf over and the guy just kind of doesn't hear it and just he keeps knocks, he knocks everything over <laughs> on the way <laughs> he breaks glass he mm-hmm. knocks shelves over and the guy thinks he hears something but then just keeps going <laughs> um but uh yeah and then it ends with you could tell they totally had no ending for this so they they kill they kill dr claw with uh with water <laughs> and it becomes the wizard of oz yeah. and then he loses the accent he loses the voice yeah. and he's like and you were there? And you were there? Well, I'm sure it was. What did he say? He goes, it was. Um, it was something of magnificent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was like. Um, or extraordinary. Extraordinary <laughs> magnitude. Or yeah. Ex- yeah. Extraordinary magnitude. <laughs> and then he pulls his flamethrower arm and then he puts it away. <laughs> uh, I mean, if anything of this movie, if even though the rest of the stuff sounds stupid, which it is. But if you watch it and just take it for what it is. <laughs> The fistful of yen is really the whole <laughs> is kind of the the anchor of this movie. It is yeah. it's, it's kind of a big payoff. <laughs> um, then of course you have um, going back to the skits. Yeah, then it cuts back to the skits. Oh, Willer, Willer beer. beer, the beer for Hari Krishna monks. <laughs> it was like what the fuck. <laughs> it's basically what it was. It was if if you don't if you don't obviously most pe- most of you probably won't know. It. But it, Miller commercials, you know, it's like a regular beer commercial, yeah. but it was always like, oh, you work till five, you know, this and it's the same thing. But this was a beer made for monks yeah. or um, uh, hybrid Krishnas. Like 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 beer commercials back then. I mean, it was more you really got to see like it was all about the enjoyment of that sip and people right. pounding it down. Right. You don't really see that with beer commercials nowadays. Um, you really get to like they really showed off like just people just just just. Having like a big sip, like kind of like what you would see in a Coke commercial, right? You know, right, just right. Downing it, appreciating it, and just getting that ah out of it. <laughs> and you don't see that in beer commercials anymore. Yeah, 
Oh. Yeah, definitely not because that would be promoting uh, alcoholism. I yeah. think in most instances. But this, but this, this particular the the was it the Willer Life? Yeah, Willer, or Willer, Willer beer, beer. Yeah, w- was spoofing those old style beer, beer commercials. And then, of course, another news update: all kinds of disasters happened in the U.S. Film at eleven. 11. <laughs> um, Scott Free. Scott Free was fucking hilarious. <laughs> It's basically the, a commercial about a conspiracy theory game on the JFK assassination. Just imagine the game of life, the board game life. The board game life, yeah. But uh, instead, <laughs> instead, well, mixed it with Monopoly. I think it had right, some yeah, Monopoly tech scores, right? In there, yeah. But then, like the whole point in the game was that, like in life, you have that car as you drive as you, as you drive down the stages of life on that road. <laughs> right. But this time, it was like it was supposed to be the modeled after the uh, the Dallas, the JFK, JFK assassination. JFK assassination, yeah. <laughs> so you're driving down the like the expressway or that park or that square, right. whatever it is. Yeah. You're trying to get away. You're the Patsy. Now <laughs> I got a Patsy. <laughs> uh, I got my rifle. Oh, that's Armageddon. That was the name of the of the trailer. The the trailer that uh, with because uh, they mentioned Donald Sutherland as the clumsy waiter. Oh, uh, yeah, with uh, with George Lazenby. With George a- Lazenby. Um, yeah, it was like uh, yeah, because at the time to- at the time of this, uh, there were a lot of disaster movies. Kind of what happened at the end. What kind of happened at the end of the '90s when we yeah. had like Deep Impact and Armageddon and, yeah. and, and all of that stuff. Actually, that seems to be kind of the trend for like at the end of each decade. Uh, at the end of each decade, decade right? yeah. Because like I don't now know about the '80s and the '90s, we didn't really have that. But it was like, but well, turn of the century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, but um, but yeah, at the end of the '70s, we had Earthquake and we had the Poseidon <laughs> Adventure and meteor and you know all of these like disaster movies that were happening and um that's what this one was uh a parody of but it featured yeah george lazenby and donald sutherland as the clumsy waiter and all he did was fall over mm-hmm. um which actually makes it actually makes sense now because um because john landis directed this he also directed animal house which donald sutherland was in he played the professor remember hey this is my job <laughs> And he was having that affair with Karen Allen, uh-huh. which who can blame him? <laughs> and then, of course, you had, uh, oh, the United Appeal for the Death oh. or for the Dead. Henry Gibson, <laughs> Henry Gibson, Henry Gibson, uh, Burbs. Uh, some of you older may remember like laughing, and, mm-hmm. but he's a he's a big character actor, but great deadpan. Oh, he always yeah. had that like that perfect deadpan in that voice, too. That right? voice. Yeah. And um <laughs> The, it was great because it was a commercial trying to um, trying to find the treatment for people death. who are dead, <laughs> people who are dead, dead or dying, you know. And then and then the, the his organ this uh, Henry Gibson's organization here would would uh, at, would be able to find what was it ways for you to continue enjoyment. It was like a social like services group, right? Right. Yeah, they <laughs> so had that way the, you can still like find out a way to still continue to enjoy life. With a loved one who has already passed on, and like in the skit, they would have like this. Um, they would they would focus on this family who's who had a child that passed away, but they would carry the child's corpse everywhere <laughs> to go. a baseball game, and Thanksgiving he's all, dinner. Like, he's already his skin's already just decomposing. Oh. That was so bad. Oh. The the one that killed me was the pool. Oh, when they're all in the and pool? he's just floating like face down <laughs> in the pool. <laughs> oh man. Um. Then. Uh, the courtroom. They had this this courtroom uh, uh, thing where it was just basically a spoof of courtroom trials. <laughs> uh, and of course, for some odd reason, they had Wally and the Beaver oh. in the courtroom. <laughs> Actually, Tony Dow, who played Wally in, in the Beaver, and mm-hmm. Jerry Zucker playing uh, the Beaver. And uh, it was so random, like so weird. But it had the, the stenographer was the guy from Airplane. Uh, yeah the one that was like you know had all the jokes and stuff Mm -hmm. like that um and then they had a commercial in between which was for nesson oil Mm -hmm. which is was really quick and it was like you know what's what's the daughter oh she's trying to cook the cat in nesson oil (laughs) and it's her trying to stuff stuff the cat cat into a pot pot of (laughs) boiling water you're like oh shit (laughs) um then of course it comes back to the courtroom one uh i think the courtroom one ran a little too long yeah it was a little kind of like okay um, well, it was so weird because like like the, the leading thing, the witness and all the, <laughs> well, the thing was like I was saying before with Kentucky Fried Movie, like I always felt like in all my my all my memories of it were always like, oh yeah, it was everything and it's everything, all these little skits leading up to a fistful again, 
and the after the fistful of yen, the movie ends. For some reason, I always remember it that way, but I always forget that the a fistful of yen is always right in the middle, middle. and that there's skits afterwards. Yeah, it's it's funny because it's like a lot of the skits after this kind of fall a little flat, which reminds me of uh, SNL. Yeah, yeah. Anytime, like once you any, get past weekend update, update yeah, right? everything kind of just seems to fall a little flat. <laughs> It's like everything else. It's like the jokes that like, ah, it's like the B and C level jokes. Right. Skits. And you're just like, okay. You know, all right. Well, most people tune out after, uh, after weekend, weekend update. updates. So <laughs> whoever's still awake gets to watch these. <laughs> um, Cleopatra Schwartz. <laughs> but what was um, what was it? She's a tough crime fighter and he's a Hasidic <laughs> rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently together they have, uh, they're, they're in love and- they fight crime. <laughs> uh, obviously, a parody of black exploitation. Mm. Um, zinc oxide and you. <laughs> it was just a commercial, basically a par- parody of the classroom educational films. That's like, um, you know, oh well, if you if zinc oxide disappeared, you wouldn't have anything, you know. And it's like, <laughs> you know, oh, the valves for water, you know, the line in your brazier and her boobs <laughs> fall. fall. Oh. Uh, and, <laughs> The leg. Remember oh, they yeah. talk about her your, prosthetic your leg? Your prosthetic leg. And, leg falls <laughs> and it's like you wouldn't be able to have the regulator on your stove and this fire comes shooting up from the stove. Your husband's pacemaker. <laughs> the brakes on your car or whatever. This this one, oh my God, the danger seekers. Um Apparently, there was a, a TV series, according to this, uh, in the s- 1973 and 74, called the called Thrill Seekers. Uh, part-time mechanic, airline mechanic, full-time daredevil. Rex Kramer, which they use that name. Mm-hmm. In Airplane. In Airplane, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. It was Robert Stack's character. <laughs> and this guy's supposed to get into, like, impo- like dangerous situations because he's a thrill seeker. Um and you know, for the sake of adventures, and he's putting on these pads, protective like he, gear. He's just like, he's just like for those of you who remember Super Dave. Yeah. Oh <laughs> God, I loved Super Dave. <laughs> and uh, and if you don't know who Super Dave is, he was Matt Damon's dad in Ocean's Thirteen. Oh yeah, that was Super Dave. <laughs> Your mother would be embarrassed. <laughs> um, oh. And for those of you who don't know who Super Dave is, like like. Uh, well, you probably don't, won't know Evil Knievel as well, yeah. but it's supposed to be like a parody of, 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 Evil, of Knievel. Evil Knievel. I remember his show. I used to watch it. That cracked me up. <laughs> um, but this is one of those that, oh my God, it would not be able to be done today. <laughs> this one definitely could not be Because he, you know, it's like they're going, he gets all dressed up in the suit. <laughs> he goes across train tracks, obviously wrong side of the tracks, right? And there's a group of African Americans playing craps against the wall. He walks right into their game, and they look at him like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Then he shouts the N-word. <laughs> and, and runs. And runs. And then those guys look and go, what the fuck? And they and all chase after him. All chase after him. <laughs> For, you could, yeah, it's, it's like, you look at it like, oh, my God. It is one of those, though, that if you even did it now, people would be like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, you would like people were just like tear your movie apart. Yeah, I, just, oh I wonder. Like, I want to know like how reaction to this was. <laughs> oh my god! So, uh, and then the la- the last skit is. Just it like- I know he just gets, just stands there and goes, ah! <laughs> yeah. and then he runs, and he it's like because the minute he finishes, he runs, and then the guys <laughs> take that second of like the fuck did he just say, and then run after him. Oh man, I was I remember I was watching it because I hadn't. Like you, I didn't really, really remember the skits afterwards. Yeah. And then when I saw this and heard him say that, I was like, oh, my God. I laughed. <laughs> yeah. But then it was like, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the last skit <laughs> is Eyewitness News. Um, another one of those. Wow. Um, it's kind of it kind of is it, to me. Well, it's. You know, eyewitness news, you know, it's 11 o'clock news and mm-hmm. the guy's giving the news report. But it's kind of one of those things that, I don't know, that always kind of, at least for me, in the back of your mind, you kind of think of like, well, what if the people on TV can see you? <laughs> yeah. And, and in this case, it actually happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you have this couple that's watching the news and they're just there on the couch and they, uh, they uh, get really comfortable and just basically start making out. Right. From there, one thing leads to another, as you could imagine. And, and I mean, it gets to a point where like they're... They're both naked. Yeah. But it's how it's shot. And like, it's very just, 
real even by like today's standards yeah, it's, it's really like explicit explicit yeah and, but the great thing is that <laughs> you have like these guys on the tv screen that are able to see the couple and they're just react. And the great well, thing is how the reporter just continues reporting. Oh yeah. And, but like how they keep whispering into his ear, and he's trying to report. It's like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, <laughs> well, what, well, like he's sitting there and he's going to the TV. And then all of a sudden he realizes what's going on. He's like, and he keeps going. But then he does that finger gesture to the one guy, <laughs> and then points. And the guy's like, oh, my. he comes in with like coffee or something like that. He's like, oh my god. You know. <laughs> the great thing is he's talking about his report about, about trade partnerships in Tokyo right now. <laughs> And he, kind of, he, he starts like reporting in circles. Yeah. He keeps coming back uh, because in Tokyo, they're <laughs> having a conference about the, the trade partnerships <laughs> and kind of like motions a guy over. And then now it's him and this other guy watching uh, on the TV screen, like into this. Into, the, into them. And then these other the other two guys come. One guy gets <laughs> called in there and he's like, oh. And then the one dude at the back behind him. Oh, kinda, he's kind of walking he, by. He walks just, by and he sees it's like, you're in a news broadcast. There's nobody just randomly walking by <laughs> in the background. But then he walks and they're like, oh my. And then when they make that noise, like, oh my God. And then all of a sudden he straightens up and he keeps, the guy looks and he's still giving the news. He's giving the news again. And, uh, oh yeah. And then it's like, uh, uh, it get, it's, uh, what was it? Uh, oh yeah. And then when the, the woman starts to orgasm, they're like, they're all- oh God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing each other's shirt and stuff like that. It's like, oh my God. Then when she finishes, they disappear, and then the guy's like, oh. And then he keeps reporting the news again. <laughs> and then the last uh, 11 o'clock news update is uh, the news. I'm in, not wearing any pants. pants. Still yeah. at 11. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that's uh, the Kentucky Fried movie, guys. Um, it's funny because they released it on Anchor, Blue, Anchor Bay, released it on DVD in 2000. And to this day, I don't think it's had it because I remember looking for it a while back on Blu-ray. I don't think it's ever had no, like, any I don't, other release since. I don't. I actually let me see here because they said in 2011 they released the two-disc select special edition on DVD in the UK. In the UK. In the UK. I'm like you fuckers. <laughs> um, let's see, because I haven't seen anything. Oh wait, July 2nd, 2013, Shout Factor released the film on Blu-ray. In a widescreen transfer, the vir- film the version also includes the original theatrical trailer and the Arrow DVD release filmmaker commentary and oh. the Zucker Brothers interview. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, so pretty recently, what five years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should so, still be, should be s- able to be found <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting, in lo- interesting enough, the film actually rates eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> That's the thing that's kind of relieving to hear because it's like, you know, we talk about like how we, we don't imagine how this film could be made. And and I was talking about this with Stephen like uh, uh, before we started recording that I, you know, as uh, I, I have friends that are a lot, uh, a good portion of my, majority of my friends are a lot younger than, than, than we are. Right. right? Uh, so they, they have grown up with different tastes and everything. And despite... Despite as we generally see things being more progressive nowadays, I I don't I I imagine them to uh, be more prudish when it comes to material like this. Like I don't know if I could show them this. I don't think they would be. I don't think they would. I, well, it's <coughs> funny too because you'll get people that'll sit there and say like, "Oh, what's the PC culture? It's all that." But then you know, it's like the rules have changed so much since you know we even twenty years ago. Yeah, you know. For us, yeah. you know, and in you know, Friends is now considered homophobic, and yeah, you know, it's like, it's like, I think it's not necessarily that the sh- those shows are homophobic. I think mm-hmm. everybody has, to, if it's any kind of joke in regards to somebody that's not whatever it is, making that it's a phobia of what of whatever kind. Mm-hmm. If you're a straight person making a joke about somebody gay, you're homophobic because you're gay. If it was a gay person making that joke, it's not that much of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think in, in many instances for uh, um, it, with movies like this, I think the, the problem is is too many people don't understand humor yeah. or just light, just enjoying humor. Because mm-hmm. it, it, uh, I did a, a podcast with um, Adam, j- uh, just another podcast a couple, couple weeks ago of things you can't say anymore. Mm. And we were talking about like gay, mm. like, you know, when I, because I was talking about when I was writing that script, 
that took place in the 90s there mm-hmm. were words that i was like should i can i use these words mm-hmm. and it was like you know when i use the word gay mm-hmm. and like when you're younger to me gay didn't mean homosexual yeah it just means like that's lame yeah and and it used to it used to actually yeah it used, <laughs> but the thing is if we we brought we were talking about that we're like actually gay meant being uh joyful being you oh know, yeah, yeah yeah you're talking about the original, the original yeah and it's like but then it was co-opted mm. and then now you have like you you can't like when we were saying gay it never meant you know you know uh homosexual yeah you know when you use the f word you know that oh which was funny because even that word i mean the original the original meaning of it wasn't wasn't that i mean it was right. like a cigarette you know oh or right like yeah. a bundle i think it was like a bundle of wood even but yeah yeah, and it's kind of like so. It's it's kind of one of those things of like. I think too many times, you know, <laughs> what is it? Uh, people, uh, what I heard some that said, yeah, well, once America lost um, an enemy like Russia, mm-hmm. we just turned on ourselves because we had nobody to kind of focus on. <laughs> and it's like because you're focusing on communism, it's like nothing else really matters. <laughs> and now we're just left to our own devices. So now everybody's offended by everything and. <laughs> You know, we're just looking for looking for causes, I guess, is what some people are saying. So you're saying that we just need to have so to solve the problems today. We just need to go to war with somebody just so we can unite against something. Yes, <laughs> because you leave us to our own devices. We hope Nor- like we hope North Korea is going to fuck it up somehow during these peace talks, right? <laughs> or Russia, Russia or even like maybe the Syria thing will work out. We yeah. get to be there for a while right, and fuck things yeah. up, right? We can be united <laughs> in, in trying to take back Syria from Assad. But I, th- I think in a lot of, in a lot of instances, we just as we've lost our sense of humor, Mm -hmm. but we've also lost the ability to determine the, to define for ourselves what's humor and what's not. Cause I've always said, I go, you know, I've always said like, you know, if I say something to, to you that, you know, I make a a stereotype to you, a cultural stereotype to you, you know me well enough that, you know, I'm joking. Yeah. I go, but I'm making it to you. I go, however, if I'm with a group of, let's say, somebody like-minded race like myself mm-hmm. saying all oh, those you know those freaking those fucking asians you know right. and make something like, that's racist yeah <laughs> you well, know? that's that's the thing like I, it's I, context I, I think is really what the, the issue is is context we've lost context yeah yeah I, I unless just, you're saying something racist and then saying well it was taken out of context <laughs> but that's the thing it, it's so it's so tricky now because i don't know how to properly explain that because just like you said there's a, there's a lot of jokes that that probably on this show that that you know or even in any sort of sort of a public right that i i will not make right, right. but like if it's between you and i i'm definitely going to make those jokes be, right be, because i know that just like you said you'll get it right? right but how do you how can you explain that to other people right yeah. like oh well in this case it is okay yeah because him and i we're familiar and we just know right but you know that's why i can't tell the same joke in front of you <laughs> that's why i can't be racist to you in front of all these people <laughs> That's okay. As soon as we stop recording, I'll yeah. definitely be totally racist to right. you. <laughs> right. And that's the thing. And that's the thing is, is like you know, it's like when it, it, one instance that I had with a, a, co- a former coworker of mine, um, he was African American, maybe Mexican. We were making racist jokes back to one another, uh-huh. and somebody, somebody white, obviously, overheard and said that they were offended. Mm. And then we looked at her and we're like, um, "So, I'm making the joke to him. He's making the joke to me. It's about us." you're one not part of this conversation and two you're white it doesn't matter what only matters is how he takes what i said it's like you know it's like it's ridiculous you know because i would you know he would say something like hey he goes give me one of those oranges you're selling by the freeway you know and i you know and i would you know and i would say to him i'd be like i'd be like going you know i would come out and go hey what happened to my grape soda? You know, and it, it would be shit like that because, you know, or judging by the, the new, uh, the, the black jeopardy, apparently Sprite now, <laughs> how do we become the black soda? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, uh, th- this is the, I, oh, I did write it down. Cool. My favorite was between Lamont and, um, and, uh, and, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what was it? Claude Lamont and um, and the, uh, the Lou, the Lou. Oh, okay. Where he's like, um, he's like, I live the unknown. I love the unknown. I am the unknown. Cloud, where are you living now? Zat is unknown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he goes, Zat is unknown. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but this is, yeah, this is one of those movies that you kind of like, 
in this culture, you kind of have to be careful on. See, the thing is, it's funny how we have movies like this that are considered, oh, that was, you know, classic comedy, like like Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Never be made today. Oh, totally not. Never be made. Even if it was a, even if it was made by an African American director. Yeah. Still could not be made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's considered a classic. BET shows it a lot. <laughs> you know, uh, y- this movie. You know, this one here. Couldn't do that. You know. Um, it, 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 you know what's funny about this movie that I actually heard once before that this was actually, it was double billed with something and like a PG cut of it was made. And double build with, with with something else, and like, if you're gonna make a PG cut of this, it would be like what, like five, five minutes, minutes long? long. Yeah. yeah, like <laughs> you're talking about a short. Yeah. you know, <laughs> it's like what would you do? Probably you could do the. Uh, you know, what? it's just it would just be that skit in the very beginning with the oil, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> like the oil and maybe a fistful of yen, yeah. but parts. So, parts of it cut out. <laughs> I forgot about fistful of yen when he's trying to signal the, that that uh, female doctor that he's there for her, mm-hmm. and he's doing the winking. And then he's like, he's, his face starts doing all that twitching to kind of get her attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so anything? Uh, uh, just uh, uh, <laughs> other than how hilarious it is. I mean, like, yeah, if you haven't just, you know, given yourself the time to see it, please see it. See it with an open mind. Yeah, see it with an open mind. Try not to be offended by it or sit there and go like, how would you guys rec- how could you guys recommend this movie? Yeah, no, just just it, it is definitely like a uh this, this it's a time capsule for humor that that I wish we could see more of today. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that is it for this episode. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and hit us with those uh five-star reviews, drop them on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, anywhere you get the show, or even drop by the blog at it's not just it's not just another blog dot com. Uh, follow us on social media, Facebook, Facebook doc, uh, Facebook dot com slash it's not just another blog, Google Plus, and Twitter at just a blog and pod. And also feedback, suggestions, comments. Let us know what you think of some of the movies we reviewed. Um, tell us how full of shit we are, or what <laughs> have you. Uh, and you can throw that over at feedback at it's not just another blog dot com. And uh, just another podcast is another podcast we do here on the site. Uh, go. Uh, we discuss life, pop culture, politics, conspiracy theories, and other nonsensical topics. So check it out every Tuesday. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at a middle age geek and Instagram middle age underscore geek. And your non existent Twitter account, Patrick <laughs> at Patrick Chen. That hasn't changed at all. <laughs> um, but you're better off trying to reach me on my Instagram at I've been as JS one. All right. So that is it. Next week we will be back with Pete's Dragon. Mm-hmm. And uh, and for those of you. I think Roger Rabbit was the first anime feature that featured animated and phys- no Pete's Dragon. Actually, before that was uh, was it Anchors Away? Is it the one Gene oh, Kelly? With, uh, Gene Kelly and then, um, Jerry the Mouse. I think so. Yeah. So Pete's Dragon, Disney, by the way, a Disney <laughs> movie, which probably wouldn't be a Disney movie today. I'm, I'm gonna. I haven't seen it in so long. I was, but I was gonna say this is. Uh, I was gonna say if this is the only Disney movie on the list, but I think that I think I know of another one that we will eventually be hitting later on yes, this year. Yes, we will. <laughs> So until next time, uh, this was a Samuel L. Brockowitz production. <laughs> <laughs>